could it be possible that the Federal Reserve actually needs to create a crash? That's what we'll talk about today. The first thing I want to look at is Zoltan. No, I'm not referencing some movie. We are talking about the gentleman from Credit Suisse who used to work at the New York Fed, literally the desk. So this person is considered to be the oracle, knowing about everything, the ins and outs of the repo market. He's got some interesting information that everybody needs to know. The second thing I want to look at is gold, the so-called barbarous relic well that price of gold has been escalating and it's approaching all-time highs and the third thing is the inflation nation prices are going berserk i'll give you some updates and everything you need to know let's begin so let's start right here fed needs to hike to slow inflation without a recession credit suisse says official may eng officials may engineer a correction in stocks bitcoin and housing lower prices won't kill growth that's what he's saying now we should take what this gentleman is saying and understand it because he is in the know and when we look at the data that's presented previously and it really makes a lot of sense to what we have today it is time to wise up he makes a very good case for this it doesn't mean this is going to happen but let's pay attention the difference this time is that policymakers need to bring about more supply of labor not less demand for it and slow inflation in services which is driven up mainly by higher housing costs and the availability of workers the key to turning those drivers around is to tighten financial conditions by increasing longer-term borrowing costs that underpin asset valuations and so we'll see. Maybe the Fed should hike 50 basis points in March, put an end to press conferences and sell $50 billion of 10-year notes the next day. He's basically saying engineer a crash, slow everything down so that people have to go back to the workforce and change the whole dynamic of how things are happening today. Think about that. Could it actually happen? Could it be possible? Well, I've talked extensively about the Federal Reserve intentionally creating a crisis, creating this boom and bust cycle. Now, he's going to have a different view of it, and he's only going to share certain points, and certainly he's compartmentalized in the knowledge that he has. But even from his viewpoint, he's saying this is what needs to be done for a different reason than what I say. But it's still interesting, right? Check this out. So he maintains that the Fed can steepen the slope by driving up term premia. Instead, the technical term for the extra yield investors demand holding the longer dated notes without killing growth. Quote, the decisions of central bankers are always redistributive. For decades, redistribution went from labor to capital. Maybe it's time for the other way around. Now, think about that. If more money goes into Instead of going into capital, instead of going into the financial markets, the stock market, so on, what if it goes to the people in a different way? Now, I'm very interested to see, of course, what comes uh, further along with this. I'll share one more quote, and then we're going to look at some other factors with the Federal Reserve, okay? The FOMC has one big problem, inflation. There are two ways to slow inflation by hiking short-term interest rates or by forcing long-term interest rates higher. Historically, the Fed used uh, rate hikes to engineer recessions that generated the slack needed to keep inflation in check. Opportunistic disinflation, right? The Federal Reserve brings them up, they bring it slow, they make this happen. With the Fed's updated dual mandate of inclusive low, uh, low unemployment and the political imperative of redistribution through firmer wage growth in the bottom at the bottom of the income distribution, basically trying to get people at the bottom end of the spectrum to be pushed up a little higher. Well, then the Fed is aiming to slow inflation via a recession being unimaginable. Hikes today then are meant to slow inflation without a recession, which is not something that the Fed has ever managed to achieve before. They've never been able to do this, a soft landing, and yet here they are trying to do it again. He's saying, let's pull the plug for a bit and let's change the dynamics. 
Interesting to say the least. I had to spend a lot of time on that because I do think it's really important. But look here. Fed's Bullard says inflation could get out of control. So action is needed now. So he's kind of, this is Fed's Bullard in the position right now as the Fed president of St. Louis. He's saying, let's take action. Let's do it. Now, he's at the one end of the spectrum for the Fed and others obviously being the other direction. Still, there's going to be that push and pull. We're at more risk now than we've been in a generation that this could get out of control. Now, where? We might be asking, where can the Fed actually increase rates to? This can happen. Well, here is the history behind that. Of course, you know the Fed funds rate, what's been happening over the years, but I thought it was interesting. There, there is a 50-year history that the Fed never hikes rates once the Fed funds rate has risen above the five-year yield. That could come before the end of 2022. So look at this blue line. That's the five year. Okay. The only time that that happened was here, 1980. Okay. That's the only moment. But if we kind of take it as a generalization, you can see where the five year goes. Okay. Time and time again, along with the Fed funds rate, which is the white line. So who knows where that would be? I mean, right now it's really increasing significantly. So we'll see. They want to get that Fed funds rate to be up real fast. So I'm interested to see what happens here over the next couple weeks and months. We need to talk. We need to look at gold. Okay. Gold is that so-called barbarous relic. You've heard that before. Well, you can see the price of that so-called barbarous relic increasing quite a bit. You are seeing it as of this recording, 1892, and is looking real hot. So we'll see what happens. One of the things I want to point out is the technicals here. You can see that we are seeing um, higher lows over the last year. So the price has been slowly going up as people are a little bit more concerned, investors are more concerned, money is flowing in. Silver hasn't felt as much of the love, though the direction is kind of moving there. As I've said many times before, first you have gold, it moves, and then silver kind of come up, comes up in a delayed fashion and usually is more exaggerated in its move upward. Okay, that's just historically, but we don't necessarily know. Gold has remained steady as stocks in Bitcoin have plunged. This is UBS. Okay, they're just saying that all I want to note here is that when people have legitimate concerns, they turn to the safe havens, the real safe havens. Of course, the financial world likes to move into, let's say, U.S. debt, U.S. dollars, whether that is in the form of bonds and treasuries or whether that is cash that comes from one end, but gold. That really has been shown right now today opposite end of the spectrum, you see the extreme, you know, risk on type of assets. ARC, you're looking at the unprofitable tech names, momentum, SPAC index, and of course you have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a high risk proposition, high risk, high reward. Of course, the price has moved. <laughs> I mean, let's not deny that. The price of Bitcoin has moved up considerably, but when times get real tough, we are watching more money being pumped into gold rather than Bitcoin. I'm interested to see what happens throughout 2022. Some are saying 100,000. Others are saying uh, it's going, it's just going to go down. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bitcoin up, up and away or Bitcoin down for 2022 at least. You could see right here, as it was criticized all throughout this period of time through 2020, um, this had you know, I was highlighting this and I mentioned Exxon specifically over the period, how Exxon Mobil was kicked off of the index. No, 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 you're not welcome here anymore. And then you look at the, you know, stock like Zoom, that the price really zoomed higher. But then what has happened? Well, you could see over the period where we have Exxon Mobil. You know, it did dip down, but it has more recently performed very well as the price of oil has gone up. 
Zoom, on the other hand, no, not the case. Just think about that. They were once the same market cap. And then today, one tenth the size. So you've got to be careful where, you know, you know, this is the future. Zoom is the future. Everybody's working from home. I'm going to put all my savings into it. It's not the case. Okay. It, it's not necessarily that you, you shouldn't invest in that, but you've got to understand the market dynamics and how cycles change. More importantly, how cycles change. Okay. Million dollar homes are becoming the norm at the fastest pace ever. Ridiculous. Million dollar homes are everywhere. At the same time, we are seeing mortgage rates soaring to levels not seen in nearly three years. This has gone up, up, and away. All right. Let's cover a couple more things right now because we are watching the, you know, the prices just escalating, just going crazy. People need to be aware of all those details. Is the economy really that bad? Why inflation has the middle class so on edge? People have not had to deal with this level of inflation. So many people today haven't seen it. They can't believe it. They literally can't believe that. And it's not just me saying this. Um, you know, you see the general sentiment out there. It is very clear. Of course, you can go on things like Reddit and, and others, which I've went to a couple times. Uh, which is just, uh, in my opinion, utter nonsense for the most part. Um, but you even see that being spread out there in the mainstream. Very sad. Okay, you got to understand the depths of what the Federal Reserve is. That's why at the end of this video and all my other videos, you see an image. That's the Federal Reserve, and in the middle, 1913. Study that, and you will understand. I'm not talking about just general knowledge. You got to study that in depth. All right. So how are they going to be able to afford anything? We're talking about, you know, the prices of everything that have have risen. Millions of Americans, including families. You know, I'm not going to read it. It goes on. Okay. I have some, some crazy stuff here. High U.S. inflation, not acceptable, but recovery is on track. Janet Yellen here with the side profile is telling you, you don't need to worry. Because the Federal Reserve and the government, they're going to be able to handle this all. They're going to handle it in an appropriate way. That's what she said. That's right. Just recently, though, she was saying that the Federal Reserve can't do anything and the actions that they take don't create this inflation, don't fix it at all. And yet, here we are. Despite rising wages, 61% of Americans are still living paycheck to paycheck. These statistics, I pull them up all the time. It's 61 here, it's 75 there, it's whatever. Most people live paycheck to paycheck. That's what I have found. You know, it, it's all over the place. These statistics, you can look at one survey or another, doesn't matter. I always find the majority of people living paycheck to paycheck. If you're making $100,000 a year, paycheck to paycheck. It doesn't matter because those people will simply live all the way up, like, like right here. They're just ready to drown. One little payment and they're finished. This is worrisome. This is a concern. This is why I talk about this all the time because people don't get it. They don't understand that this is a big cycle change. The Federal Reserve, I talked about it in 2018. I was saying, even in 2017, if the Federal Reserve stops printing, you better watch out. You better watch out. Watch the Federal Reserve. Watch the Federal Reserve. Watch the Federal Reserve. I see comments all the time. I'm not going to watch you anymore because you're just saying the same thing all the time. And yet, what happened in 2018? The same thing all throughout 2020. Okay, it's going crazy. Things are going to go off the charts. Yes, and watch what happens when the Federal Reserve stops doing what they're doing. And people have said, no, 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 you know what? You're a liar. You're a liar. Unsubscribe. Well, guess what? Just this month alone, subscribers down. Guess what happened last month? Subscribers down. These people right here don't want the truth, and they're going to get smacked upside the head. Look at what's happening with the markets right now today. Is this normal? It shouldn't it be a concern to you that it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. We are at the level we have been at back, back in 2021. Okay, just look at this. This is the Dow Jones. Take a look. This level, April 2021. Is that 
Oh, and I'm not even showing you my screen. That's awesome. Look, 2021, April 2021. If this continues just a little while longer, we're going to see the peak that we experienced at the beginning of 2020. But that won't mean all of those, for many stocks, it's already happened. We are watching all of that growth, all of that stuff just evaporate. Be very careful. Watch what you're doing. Invest appropriately. Hedge your bets and diversify. That's my message. If you appreciate it, hit that thumbs up button. I really want to thank you for that, all the support, the kind words, and so on. Your thumbs up, your comments do support this channel. I'm going to thank you for that. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely got to watch it. All right. So just click it and I will see you over there.